no sleep till. Welcome to Hawks Recap Game 76 over and done with for the Hawks. And the Hawks pick up the away victory against the New York Islanders of Brooklyn by a score of 3-1. to one. Forsberg so close to getting his first career shutout. Can't quite get it done, but he does pick up the victory and has a fantastic performance to boot. And who knew that it would be much easier to win when you don't give up five goals in a game. Before we get more into the game, I just want to apologize first that my throat and chest is just not feeling great right now, so if I don't sound 100% or I just sound off, that's probably the reason why. It's just like right right there in that area. It's not feeling great. It's I'm not coughing or anything. It's not like terrible, but it's just like, ugh, you know? I, I don't know what it is, but it's not 100%, that's for sure. Coming into this game, both teams not going to be making the playoffs. Both teams figured they would be at the beginning of the season. It was pretty much expected, but this season just hasn't worked out for either team. But there's a little bit of beauty in games like this where neither team really has anything to lose. They can just kind of go out there, nothing really on their back, and just try stuff. If the defensemen want to be ultra-aggressive and pinch, they can do that, and it's not really going to affect them beyond this game. So why not? First meeting between these two teams, Islanders won 7-3, so the Hawks trying to get a little bit of revenge in this second and final meeting between these two teams this season. Speaking of being aggressive and taking chances, the Hawks certainly did that in the early going, and it led to some really good chances the other way for the Islanders, some odd man rushes, but Forsberg stood tall, kept it a 0-0 game, and that's how it would go basically the entire first period. It would go into first intermission, with no score, both teams kind of trading chances, but both goalies making some pretty good stops. Also something to note, Patrick Kane playing center in this game, taking the opening face off of the game at center. Just just try things, I guess. Who knows? We'll see. But there's no reason he's going to be a center in the long term. We have Taze and we have Schmaltz and we have Anisimov, and we're not going to put Kane at a third or fourth line center. That's just not going to happen. So... Just kind of the rest of the season, this is pretty much going to be it for Kane playing center, I would say. <laughs> the second period would feature some great puck luck for the Blackhawks, something that they really haven't been able to say a whole lot this year. The puck just hasn't seemed to be bouncing their way this season. However, tonight it certainly was, and it all started two and a half minutes into the second period when Patrick Kane... On the power play, throws the puck towards the slot area, trying to pass it to Anisima, but it hits off an Islander stick and redirects into the back of the net. 1-0 Hawks early in the second. And then just two minutes later, Brandon Saad on the rush, just kind of shanks a shot. It goes wide, it takes a weird hop off the end boards, back right out in front to him, and he kind of just catches Halak off his post, and he slides it in, goes off Halak's back foot and into the back of the net. 2-0 Hawks, and that would be how this game would go into the third period. This game really even, except for the really good bounces going the Hawks' way. The third period, the Islanders came out looking to, well, get back into this game, tie it up. The Hawks had a real tough time in this third period, especially getting the puck out of their own zone. The Islanders got a number of second chances because of it. And the Hawks had possession a lot of those times, but just couldn't find a way to get it out. And that's something that they've really struggled with this year at times and something that's really stung them a lot. And it's surprising that the Islanders really didn't take advantage of those opportunities more in this game. On the other hand, you got to credit Forsberg because he made some huge saves to bail his team out. So that could be one of the reasons why Islanders didn't get a goal until really late in the third period. And that goal would come a little under three minutes left to go in the game when Tavares has the puck in close to Forsberg and he just roofs a ridiculous backhand shot over Forsberg's shoulder into the back end of that and makes this a one goal game. You got to feel for Forsberg because he played fantastic in this game and to come so close to his first career shutout. Ugh. But... I mean, 
Tavares is going to Tavares. It's going to be interesting to see where he goes after this season. It, he, that's not the type of player the Islanders can let go, but it almost seems like they're going to lose him. That's going to be a really interesting saga. So the Islanders would pull their goalie trying to get the extra skate around, trying to tie this game up. Brent Seabrook will get the puck basically in the corner of his own zone, just flip it out towards the center to get it out of the zone, and lucky enough, it goes straight in to the Islanders' net. 200-foot goal for Brent Seabrook, his sixth of the year. Got to feel good for him for sure, and that seals the victory for the Hawks, and the Hawks win this one 3-1. to one. Other than that, there's not really a whole lot to say about this game. This was an evenly played game against two evenly matched teams. Two teams that have some offensive firepower, but struggles on the back end. In this game, Forsberg played well enough to win, and the Hawks got some good breaks, and that was the difference in the game. I know some people are going to be a little disappointed because they want to see the Hawks lose as many games as possible right now to get a better draft position but personally, I would rather see him win games like these at least every now and then here because I think it is a good thing for confidence going into the offseason and next season, especially for our young guys, to kind of revenge a 7-3 to loss earlier this season against a team that has a superstar in Tavares, some quality players. To be able to pick up a victory, I think that can go a long way in terms of confidence and in terms of draft positioning there's no guarantees if you drop you know as many spots as you can it's still a lottery even if buffalo or whoever gets you know last in the standings at the end of the year it doesn't mean they get first pick it doesn't mean they get dolan so there's no guarantees even if we lose the rest of our games i'd rather us see us pick up a couple wins kind of like this up next for the Hawks, they come back home to the United Center to play the San Jose Sharks, who are in second place in the Pacific Division. That's probably where they're going to end up at the end of this year. So they don't really have a whole lot to play for in terms of positioning. However, they want to be ramping up. They want to be playing their best hockey going into the playoffs. So that's what they're probably going to be doing. They're going to come out firing. Win or lose, I'd love to hear more Chelsea Dagger at least. I, I think we can agree on that. But after that game, then it's five straight games to finish the year against Central Division opponents, and two of those coming against the Blues, who won tonight and have moved into a tie for that second wildcard spot. So we'll have some opportunities at the end of this year to kind of play some spoiler. So that should be kind of fun. And with that, I say thanks so much for watching this episode of Hawks Recap. I apologize about my voice and chest and throat and everything. Hopefully it sounded decent for you. Let me know your thoughts on the game and the team's performance down in the comments section below. Like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate it for sure. But most importantly, as always, stay safe, make good decisions, and I'll see you next time.